Welcome on in, Taurus. Welcome to your 2022 forecast. Um, we're going to cover a lot of astrology in here. And uh, we'll see what cards just fly out randomly while I'm talking about the astrology. And if you see my cat just pop out of nowhere, well, you know what that's about. Crazy kitties. All right. Um, I want to say uh, a couple things before I get going. Um, obviously, you know, this is a general reading. And uh, so, you know, the, the most accurate reading you can get is a private reading. I am running a sale. 60 minutes for a hundred dollars. Uh, you know, if you want to check that out, get the link down below. I will pin it to the comments. Um, some of you also might want to look at within the context of the 22 astrological forecasts that I just put out to just see how these energies are full affecting everyone collectively. And so I will have the video at the very end of this one so that if you want to watch it, if you missed it, you can. And, uh, it's quite thorough about the year ahead. Now, in this video, we're going to cover three topic areas, relationships and romance, career and money, health and healing, and we're talking astrology, we'll see what cards pop out. Um, if you do not see your sign here um, for 2022, it's because it was not requested. If you want your sign, you have to request it on my community page. Yes, go over there, you can go to the community page, or, you know, just make sure that um, you have subscribed and hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified when I post things to my community page, right? Like questions as to what signs y'all want done. All right. Okay. So let's get into this. And, um, you know, as many of you know, this is good for a Taurus sun, but particularly Taurus rising. And I am a Taurus rising. So I'm really excited about this reading. Let's start off talking about where the North Node is for this year and really actually for the next year and a half. It's going to be in your first house. So this could bring a lot more recognition and popularity to you. And wow, here we go. We'll take the one that's upright. You're having to leave some things behind, Taurus. You're having to walk away from some things and maybe emotionally disconnect from some things. And um, yeah, back to that North Node in your first house, um, feeling some instability. But, you know, I think we've been having to get used to that over the last how many years since Uranus went into Taurus, right? Um, and collectively, it's just an energy for us all. But I think most definitely it's hitting the fixed signs, um, notably, and of course, your sign, since this isn't our sign, right? So um, this is continuing to push us out of our comfort zones. And the last few years um, have really shown us a need to adapt and to change. And the, the changes that we're being forced to make, <laughs> or we're seeing that we're having to make, are really revealing to us where our efforts are worthwhile. So with um this north node i will say that in april it will go into um the 12th house so that's going to be really good for spirituality healing um well and i'm getting yeah i'm hearing idealism with this knight of cups popping out so you know the first four months of the year i'm seeing that perhaps you are having to emotionally disconnect from hearing from things that are not working out okay Things that are not working out, right? The next cup is the nine of cups. So you're like, okay, what's working? Because that's going to make me happy. And you're going to that in the first four months of the year. But there's a shift uh, of energy starting in April when the North Node slips into your 12th house um, briefly there, um, where you become more dreamy, more idealistic. Let me say, some of you, um, if you're going, you might be going through your first nodal return if you were born September 1st through uh, 2012 through March 22nd, 2014. I don't think we've got anyone here that's that young, right? But maybe you have kids that are that young or grandkids that young. Um, others of you going through a second nodal return if you were born January 21st, 1994 through August 11th, 1995. Some of you going through an inverse, which, wow, I talked about recently. I've been going through <laughs> a nodal inverse myself. Um, if you were born uh, June 12th, uh, 1975, 
through December 29th, 1976. And um, yeah, I've got some content on my channel about going through a nodal reverse. If any of you are interested, it's on my spirituality playlist if you want to check that out. But um, others of you are in your fourth inverse nodal return. And that's if you were born October 30th, 1956 through May 20th, 1958. But um, significant stuff. I'm not going to really go into the inverses or the returns here. But uh, suffice it to say, it's significant for you individually. And that's something you probably want to look into the effects of that or reach out to me for a private reading if you're interested. But moving on, you know, I'm going to say the main astrological event this year um apart from the united states having its pluto return right pretty big stuff in february um february 19th 20th to be exact um is the later on in the fall when we have the triple conjunction that's happening again in your first house taurus um and it's happening between mars the north node and uranus which is squaring saturn and aquarius this is all fixed energy um which can bring you know this can bring some unpredictable energy which we fix signs don't appreciate now do we <laughs> we appreciate that the least of all the signs you know <laughs> so when we're talking about uranus um we have to take into consideration the possibility of very sudden and unexpected events coming up and um because this is impacting your first house we're probably looking at issues impacting your body or your appearance or your reputation so try to be careful about your physical health in late july early august um, this could also for some of you indicate there's some deliberate changes that you are making to your appearance or perhaps you are rebranding yourself okay if you are trying to market yourself for employment or you're trying to market a business that you have well you want to change the way that you're being seen by others or just shifting your own personal direction in life and yeah unfortunately this shift might come out of anger frustration over limitations and obstacles that have personally impacted you your sense of identity your physical health your reputation and you just get into a place where you're like you know what i'm no longer identifying with this and yeah i think you know kicking off this year there you are where it's kind of there's a lot of sober energy at the beginning of this year let me say i mean i feel it's going to soften up a bit for you um in april but that that's kind of te temporary it will shift back into this first house and given all the collective energy you know you you got to come back to square one which is you taurus and that will be the case for the next year and a half so um let me say this year you're gonna have a lot of um well let me say at the, at the foundation here this is have you been holding on to a fantasy that has been keeping you a victim with the seven of cups in reverse um yeah, that's something that you're gonna have to really uh, look at this year all right um good luck for you is going to be found in all things aquarian 11th house okay with uh, social networking friend groups social media the internet okay that's you listen if you're looking for an easy break that's where it is right you're looking to find love get out there start you know get dating um you know socializing show up to those parties and gatherings that you're invited to um if you're it's not love if it's money career opportunities show up show up show up connect all right um plug into the things that are going to work out for you all right um with this jupiter in the 11th house that's it that's where your breaks are all right this year uh, the challenges though saturn in the 12th house is about that career and um that rep your reputation out in the world so yet again i see another energy of status or your public life the way you're being seen similar to that north node in the first house just another layer of energy they're putting pressure on that outer life that public life okay um you being challenged by that so just be aware of it let me see what the overarching energies are for you in 2022 please show me spirit please show me for taurus Taurus rising in 2022. Okay. Peace before completion. So I, I really think this is about you finding your peace um, before, you know, something has ended. Okay. 
some of you dealing with a lot of uncertainty, doubt, hesitation, loss of faith, unstable conditions. This is talking about being extra careful. And yeah, maybe there being some kind of uh, discord going on. And I mentioned that, you know, with Uranus in, in Taurus and then, you know, North Node in Taurus. That's definitely... Um, bringing up this issue of where are we going here? It's, I don't know why it's like feeling like you're walking on thin ice. You see it cracking here in the image. All right. Somebody may be feeling like they're walking on thin ice and you having to find uh, your peace, right? This is about harmony, balance, perfection, equipoise, a sense of well-being, favorable conditions, expansion. Okay. So how do you do that? How do you do all of that when you feel like you're walking on thin ice? Um, I talk about this, by the way, in the um, astrology reading that I put out on the collective astrology, where um, I'm talking about collectively, this is a year where we're all having to figure out how do we, um, how do we stabilize ourselves when in an unstable world? How do you find stability? Um, when things are, you know, unstable. Okay, so let's get into love and relationships and we'll see what comes out, you know. Um, that really wanted to slip forward. Some of y'all, um, things are really in limbo on hold and um, maybe waiting around for somebody to commit or, you know, somebody here is not giving or getting a commitment is what this card is telling me with the hangman and the stuck. Um if you're in a friends with benefits relationship, I don't know that this is going to be a year where you get commitment. Sorry to say, um, starting in January with Venus and Capricorn retrograde in your ninth house will hopefully help you to balance out your life. Um, and I see the opportunity for healing there with the Ace of Chalices and um, hopefully opening up about emotions. Um, this is going to help you bond the energy, you know, in January will help you bond with people who are maybe slightly older than you or mature and stable in some respect, or they help you, again, balance stable things out. That, you know, on the positive, that hangman energy is a very stasis type of energy, I will say. Um, so during Venus and Capricorn, Venus retrograde in Capricorn in the ninth house, wow, let me get some cards there. Um, you're going to be thinking more deeply about the relationships that you currently have in your life. And it might be a slow pace, definitely with this Knight of Chalices. Um, I see a lot of emotional energy, healing, and things kind of um, maybe somebody idealizing. But again, with this particular deck, it is it indicates somebody maybe modest, holding back, and you know being more in their emotions and their feelings, possibly because of some responsibilities, some heavy burdens um, that have been going on for quite some time in partnerships where there's a feeling that somebody has to hold back and cannot give it their all. Uh, maybe having to do with hidden suspicions or doubts about the other person. And so I am concerned there might be some one-sided give and take in relationships. And if you're not in a relationship during this time of January, the cards are indicating to me that you're having to emotionally heal these issues in your romantic relationships where perhaps it's been, you know, one person pulling all the weight or doing all the work in a relationship. It's gone on for quite some time. You're displeased with it. And, um, Maybe you're holding back because other people are holding back and it makes you feel very unconfident and unsure about the situation. So during this time, um, you're going to think a lot very deeply about these relationships and take a slower pace to uh, collect yourself after what has happened in the year prior and maybe find some new connections with people, possibly in unexpected places. Um, this also could bring about something that surprises you on a spiritual level. Um, and in a way, this might inadvertently help with your career is what the astrology is indicating. And and that is really showing me with this Ace of Chalices here that the surprise on the spiritual level is that you get some kind of um, spiritual breakthrough or healing or growth about what's going on with these relationships. So um, things are going to start to fire up and get more passionate and... Um, March, early March, when Venus moves into Aquarius, and Mars also 
enters Aquarius, which could spice up your sex life that wanted to jump. <laughs> yeah, I see things healing and leveling out by March. And um yeah, you could get more more spice, more variety here. I see, you know, emotional, more of an emotional, spiritual tone healing going on in the first three months. Um, but things start balancing out. And maybe, again, because you're listening to your intuition, you um, you balanced out these emotions, uh, emotions and done the emotional work. Late July, early August. Well, um, if there are any kind of issues coming up and you're love life there's going to be an opportunity to improve it and to heal it but likely that's going to happen through um, improved communications okay and again i'm getting with this temperance card that you know listen to spirit listen to your intuition and try to bring harmony in these relationships so much as you can help it um all right, after October, things are probably going to start slowing back down. Uh, heavy retrogrades in October, by the way. It's the heaviest retrograde month out of the year. So when things are really grinding to a halt, or so it feels, um, you know, don't, don't expect to get a lot of cooperation forward movement. There might be timing issues as well that come up. And like I said, the, the communication and listening to spirit and intuition will really help. And it is during this time also that Jupiter goes retrograde and back into Pisces. Okay. So, um, more of this healing energy I'm seeing, uh, in November uh, might be a time when you're looking to reconnect perhaps with an old friend or a group or a soulmate and then when Jupiter goes retrograde back into your 11th house um, during that time. Yeah, looking back at these old connections and uh, maybe looking at why you've had some difficulty getting expansion with those people and where do you need to get expansion socially. And with soulmates, okay. And by the time we get into holiday season, November, December, um, we're looking again more at this theme of um, 11th house stuff where you are really plugging into your social circle and hopefully feeling a sense of, you know, camaraderie. I think overall this is a time, um, like with family, family relationships, where, you know, things are going to be peaceful this year. Um, and you will have some better relationships with your relatives, hopefully. Um, but again, if you're looking for love, I think it's likely to be found in friend groups, social gatherings, online. Um, really try to strategically <laughs> position yourself in groups of people that are like-minded, that share your values. I think that's really going to help over the long term. And... All I'm going to say finally about the friend issue, I'm not the friend, the family issue is with Saturn there in the 10th house. I do know, particularly myself as a Taurus rising, it is putting, there's a mirroring going on in the fourth house, which is opposite to 10th. So the restrictions that you're feeling in that 10th house with your career, your public life is in some way um, bringing about some kind of restrictions with home and family and sense of belonging. We're going to talk about that next in the career and money portion of this reading. Well, it looks like we're closing out again with this seven of chalices, which we had here at the foundation in the reverse. So, you know, right. I mentioned earlier that there's some holding on to some wishful thinking or fantasy land or, you know, in a fog about your options. And that's maybe been keeping you um, in, in somewhat of a, a victim mentality and that needs to be a broken out of this year. Um, I'm going to put this off to the side. Um, let me move on uh, to, you know, the career and money. Career and money during this month. Or I'm sorry, year. <laughs> during this year, let's talk about that. I think if you're looking for a job this year, it's going to be good for you. Good for job seekers and people who are looking for some type of change with their career. Um, the first three months of the year might really be a bit of a struggle, um, particularly, you know, with the retrograde energy, with um, Venus and Capricorn. Um, 
during that first month as well, like kickstarting uh, the year in January, that's that's not really very helpful financially because Venus is not just a love energy. It's about anything that nourishes mind, body, soul. Okay, and so um, there's a lot of energy to quickly start new things. I will say that you might feel like you want to start things. <laughs> But, um, yeah, maybe some side hustles, uh, but be, be very aware that, um, you, you know, it could be premature. All right. And that later on you realize that, um, these things were kind of in vain and, um, end up not being very successful. I'm sorry to say the advice here with this is, you know, I don't want to discourage you. Okay. Um, right. Cause I have a lot of things that I can do I, with these seven of cups showing up twice, <laughs> There's a lot of options here, okay? But but which one? Which one is going to be viable? Which one is going to be successful? And I think the first three months of this year, it's really going to be hard to see. Um, and so try to go slow in your decision making and try to be as flexible, flexible and agile as possible. Um, as new information comes in, because again, if you look at the collective astrology of you know January, February, particularly in the financial markets, uh, there's a lot, a lot of shift um, going on, a lot of things in flux, and um, a lot of financial uh, upheaval as well, particularly in February. Um, so. You know, what you think in your mind is going to work out, it, it's not that it couldn't work out for you. It's that there are outer circumstances that are applying pressures and challenges and obstacles that maybe you cannot yet see or understand your way around until you get um, into March. March is a really, really good time, by the way. No retrogrades in March at all. <laughs> really good time so just try to just try to hold on this first three months go easy on yourself even though there's going to be a temptation to jump the gun on some things um and also um i you know i want to say some of you you want to depend on your family for support uh and i'm going to say this as a taurus rising i can already feel my family is like eh, and and some of them in the family they're able to do it but they just don't want to get involved. I don't know what it is, but uh, the astrology is even really indicating that, um, you know, if you're counting on family for support during the first three months of this year, um, huh, might want to look into some other options, okay, because I don't know that that's going to pan out. And some of you might not see that. I've already, I'm already seeing it because I've already had some talks with my family and I, and I know who's probably going to help me and who won't. And I know who's going to give me a hard time about getting help if I need it, you know. Um, oh, but if you want to help me out, you can get a private reading, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. I just had to slip that in. It's a shameless plug. You understand, right? <laughs> you understand, Taurus. Uh, all right, so um, I think that the situation, though, is going to massively improve by March. And there will, you know, the money matters are going to definitely improve by the end of the year. Like the start of this year, uh, probably the toughest, roughest three months, you know, financially. But by the end of this year, you know, it, it's going to be a lot better. And by mid-22, you know, it's going to be a great time for Taurus's, you know, long-term investments. So I am seeing a coming together here. Things, um, you know, and then with the King of Pentacles. Yeah, I'm loving that. Because this is about stability, security, and trust. All right. And, you know, some of you, if you are working in the industries of, you know, banking, finance, uh, maybe you're doing investments, uh, real estate, uh, property management, food service, um, anything having to do with the tangibles of life, okay, the nuts and bolts, right? We can't, we can't not survive on this 3D planet, you know, this reality, I should say. You can't survive here without food, clothing, shelter. Um, some of you may be medical, although I don't really associate medical uh, with this card. Um, that would be more of a king of chalices, in my opinion. But I'm just saying, um, what are the basics for living? I think you're going to find um, some healing and recovery on that, all right? Um, by the way, I'm going to have a video coming out um, end of January. I'm sorry, end of December, early December. Uh, early January on uh, crypto, okay, crypto and investing in, in Bitcoin and stuff like that. Um, and I am seeing this really showing here that this could be 
something that would really be helpful to you in getting um, a more happiness, more celebration with that three of chalices. Um, so might want to watch that video and make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell for notifications so that you can catch it. Yes, and I'm seeing here that that's going to help you to balance out your finances and move on from something that was maybe very difficult and troubling towards ooh, building generational wealth for some of you. And again, this might be also a shift where you're able to... Um, get more cooperation from family members by mid-June. And um, others of you, this is about your career and getting recognition. Yeah, with the Eight of Wands here, this is really showing me things are going to start speeding up for you with um, your career, your public life, your, um, your family, okay? Um, sharing of resources within a family. And it might be some of you spouse's income, that type of thing. I see a lot of communications and forward movement here where by mid-2022, whatever this difficulty was, um, you, you move on from it. Really good stuff. Now, the luckiest time for you in your career is in a way going to be the beginning of the year, even though I did say financially probably going to be rough. Don't jump the gun the first three months of the year. Well, Jupiter will be in your 10th house during this time. So it's a good time to start a business um, and invest in assets like real estate, crypto. It's a good time to do your, you know, stockpiling food. Um, some of you, if you're like, I can't afford that, you know, I'll tell you how to afford it. Okay. You can watch my crypto video that's going to come out. Um, others of you, you know, that are just daunted and overwhelmed by that and just don't even care. Look, start, you maybe start doubling up on your, um, groceries, um, staples, you know, dry goods, non-perishables when you go grocery shopping and just build up a nice little stockpile reserve. Okay. And that's a way to invest in yourself. And hedge against inflation, because Lord knows we have plenty of that going on right now and in the year ahead. I talk about that in the astrology, uh, 2022 astrology that I put out. Um, a link for that will be at the end, as I said before. But um, if you are a business owner during this year, you're probably going to have the most luck, especially when it comes to profits and increased benefits, um, especially if you are investing in assets or trying to diversify your income by having various streams of revenue really good if you are an employee it is a year when you're likely going to um, find some kind of promotion here relocation is very likely or a pay raise is likely in your future but that's going to come after april okay i don't mean to confuse anybody it's after april some of you yes very mentally restless and communicating in that way some of you putting out applications resumes um, marketing yourself a whole lot more um, getting the word out um, because you're trying to put an end to something um, maybe something that privately you you've known about that you've been struggling about uh, trying to end a difficult phase in your time where you have been dealing with a lot of doubts and uncertainties and lack of clarity might be a female friend possibly a pisces i'm also seeing cancer scorpio here that is in some way helping you to put an end to this this long time, this long cycle of dealing with um, insecurities and doubts, self-doubt for some of you. And really, I'm seeing also getting some emotional healing with that as well. If, yeah, I mean, listen, it's like, I know you're like emotions. Yes. You know, it's it's like the saying goes, you know, playing, playing with my money is like playing with my emotions. And I'm seeing that here that some of you, again, this might've been a private battle, okay, that you've been going through where money issues have been really getting to you emotionally, but you are, I'm seeing endings here, successful endings, so closing it out. And you really mentally restless about how to do that and getting a, possibly a friend to help you with that. And again, and it might, it's for you, if you're an employ, employee and you're putting out you know, applications, resumes. Um, it could be coming through a water sign female that hires you. You end up working for them or with them, and, and they, they end up really helping you work through this issue and put this difficult time frame uh, to an end. So um, 
And, and, and let me also say that around mid-April with Jupiter in your 11th house, again, friendship is I'm seeing really positive stuff around the friendship, though. I don't think you might see, you don't see it just yet. Here we go again. You don't see it just yet. There's somebody there that's going to help you in a friend group, or you're going to end up net, you know, networking, and they end up plugging you into something that really heals this issue. Uh, financially and uh, maybe on social media as well with that Jupiter in the 11th house is somebody online that um, proves to really um, be a major connector to um, breakthrough in your life and ending some difficult time in your life a really positive stuff I want to encourage y'all put yourself out there on social media especially if you're like me and you have an online business my god ride this wave and, you know, get yourself out there. And, and, and especially with North Node in your first house, sweet Jesus, put yourself out there. You will be recognized. You will make connections that are going to give you the breaks that you need this year. Okay, that's where it's going to be found, 11th house and sticking yourself out there. Now, uh, in terms of earning more money this year, um, I think that you will definitely be doing that. Uh, but there is a cautionary warning here to, um, you know, right, keep things balanced here. I saw that with the temperance card. Never, and I saw the temperance, right? That's a synchronicity, um, right? You don't, you know, just go out and um, just spend it all, right? <laughs> you, you know, you're going to have to pay yourself first. And what is that? That's that savings and investing. And these days, you know, the best way to save money is by investing in things that, um, you know, don't lose value in a bank account through inflation and low interest rate, right? By putting it in things like crypto or things that have tangible value like real estate or precious metals. I could go on, but um, pay yourself first and keep it balanced. And as your income increases this year, try not to spend it on things that you don't need. Otherwise, it could go south pretty quick, right? Because we're dealing with, again, Uranus and Taurus, where you think things are moving on up and that you can move on up like the Jefferson and then hot damn, it just switches out of nowhere, out of left field and you never saw it coming. That's Uranus, right? Save for those rainy days, all right? Or better yet, invest for those rainy days. So, um, if you are going to spend money this year, I think the advice is for you to spend it on, on paying off debts or loans, right? So that uh, you get the upper hand on that situation and know that it is okay this year to spend money on family members as long as you don't overdo it. Yeah, I mean, like, and I'm going to just tell you straight up, okay? You know, on a, on a relationship note here, <laughs> uh, just a little tip. If you were struggling earlier this year and uh, some family members didn't want to help you out, didn't want to get involved, and then you finally get your break uh, after April, definitely around mid-year, and then they need some help, well, uh, you know, remember that. Remember that. Write that down. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop shuffling at this point. Um, yeah, king of, there it is, king of chalices. All right, so some of you working in the medical field or healing or spirituality, I'm seeing a lot of blessing there too. And um, with that work, um, those of you who are light workers, a lot of blessing with that as well this year. Um, and I'm also seeing another energy here of emotions uh, getting healed, tied to money. It's very much interconnected. I think people underestimate it, especially in tarot readings. They don't like to watch these, you know, um, the money and career readings are not as uh, popular as the, the love readings, okay? Uh, but the reality is that the two are very interconnected. So um, let me also say May 2022 is going to bring you more success in all areas of your life. But yeah, if you... If you can avoid some misunderstandings during the Mercury retrograde periods, um, probably going to be the best for you to help you to just take advantage of the most luck. Um, and I talk about the retrograde periods in my 2022 astrology uh, reading. Make sure to check out that video if you are interested. Um, by September, um, this is going to encourage you to break out of your rut. I actually want to get you some, some advice on this time, all right? We'll see what comes out. But September 22 is really going to encourage you to break out of your rut, make some changes in your life, especially with your career. And then just be aware that in uh, fall, we're going to have the last uh, Uranus-Saturn square, 
or we're going to hit the peak of it. Okay, we're going to we're dealing with that. We dealt with that three times in 2021, and it, that that energy is remaining with us in 2022. But we hit the peak of it in fall September time. So um, that is really a, a transit that's responsible for a lot of upheavals that can't have been going on. So it could be bring about for you a time where you need to revisit old issues and get them sorted out um, because there's right with the ener this energy happening last year. And again, it's carrying over this year. We are going to see some repeated themes from last year of where you had the upheavals coming up yet again this year, asking you to try to try give it a second chance. Give it another go around to sort this out if you didn't get it sorted out last year. And since this is happening in your 10th house of career, reputation out in the world, um, status, um, it could symbolize that there are some troubles maybe with a boss, although I didn't quite see it in the cards. Um, it could be that you are becoming a boss yourself. Honestly, I, for some of you, it might not necessarily be that there's, I didn't really see any conflict with a boss per se. Like I didn't see any fighting or arguing or disagreements coming up, but, um, some of you just decide that you're going to become your own boss. You're going to boss up and you're going to embark on some kind of entrepreneurial adventure. So that is exciting, I think. Um, and around the same time, there will be Venus Kazemi happening in your sixth house. So it suggests that there could be some kind of story in your life unfolding of maybe you were the underdog or you felt like you were not being respected or valued or whatever. And you decide that you're going to go out and create your own value and offer it to the world. Um, pretty good. Now, also, finally, I'm going to say if you are wanting to move this year, um, I am sorry to say, because I'm a Taurus rising and I hate hearing this, but this is the truth um, that, you know, the Taurus risings are not getting any astrological support with this this year. Um, it's adding to the difficulty that Saturn is in the 10th house, as, as I said earlier, and it is opposing the 4th house, putting constraints on your public life. And that is in some way mirroring um, or applying pressure to your private home life. And so the struggle isn't here to get you to acquiesce, to get you to submit to, oh, woe is me, weak worm of the earth, you know, I'm just going to take it like a little, you know what, <laughs> um, it, but it is to get you to work through the 10th house blockages that are afflicting um, you and, and also inadvertently affecting your fourth house. So let's see what the financial advice is for those wanting to get movement. Obstacles and blocks are listed, uh, lifted, organized for success. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm going to tell you, I don't think this is going to automatically happen given the astrology. I think this is about you um, taking strategic act action within yourself, within your own power, with the truth, okay? The truth and knowledge with that sword and with the shield, you protecting yourself, okay? That's how you lift the blockages and the obstacles. This says all your personal work and positive energy shift have overcome previous obstacles and blocks are lifted away. You will now experience progress and forward movement with your projects. Stay centered in gratitude to ensure that your flow of abundance continues. So this is about you and your power and stepping into your power to overcome this, right? It's not about waiting around for spirit to do for you what you can do for yourself. I really feel Saturn is there trying to get you, push you, pressure you to level up. And some of you who are, you know, like to believe in magic that it's automatically going to happen for you. Well, I don't think this is going to work out, right? Okay, now on organizing, this is saying... Um, Organize your thoughts, your reports, your living and workspace, your finances, and that's going to help you to know and plan your next action steps, right? Again, about you taking action, but going back to this, where there's a lack of clarity and what's viable and what's not, I think you're going to get that worked out by March. I'm going to say that. First three months, I don't know which cup do I drink from, all right? But April onward, I, I think it's you're going to shift out of that, and that, that is definitely a positive thing. So, yeah, let me um, let me move on to you know health and healing, and I'm going to pull from Kipper to see what's going to come out for that. Um, and do I want to pull on for Kipper? I will clarify with Kipper. Okay. 
This year, this is going to be a time of focusing on mental health. Um, some of you might be prone to workaholism with Saturn in that 10th house. And you're going to have to work through that and get, again, a lot of balance with the temperance coming up twice of, you know, how, how do I balance my professional life and my personal life, my home life versus my work life, right? Um, it could be taking a toll on your health if things are, are not healed and in balance and harmonizing, okay? Um, some of you, like I, I've done this myself, you know, working like a dog, thinking that if I just fix this 10th house, these 10th house problems, then it's gonna spill over and bless my fourth house. But only all of what happened is, you know, um, I was draining my fourth house. I was taking from my fourth house family, basically. Um, and sometimes, a lot of times, we don't get the blessing of the hard work that Saturn is forcing us to do while it's in the 10th house. We're not going to get that blessing until after Saturn gets out of the 10th house. So to some degree, um, yes, you keep working, but don't work yourself like a dog um, to the detriment of your family and your private life. Um, because you have to understand that no amount of work is going to give the rewards that Saturn's going to give you when it gets out of the 10th house. Okay, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, try to be balanced. I keep working, but be balanced. Um, when we hit May, there's going to be a notable shift in the atmosphere because Jupiter is going to be entering into Aries. And um, this is where the largest planet in our solar system is going to remain for m most of the rest of the year, except for basically about a month in, the, in late November, or December. Okay. And then it'll go back into Aries very late December into 2023. All right. Um, but when Jupiter shifts out of Pisces and into Aries during this time frame, um, it's going to be really important for you. Um, because Aries is going to be in your 12th house. So pay attention to any synchronicities, divine downloads, any increased psychic connection, right? I've been mentioning that with these temperance cards here. Um, and I'm even now seeing it with the seven of chalices of, um, you trying to figure out how to bring heaven down to earth, you know, you trying to manifest those ideals into reality. Well, um, it's all very spiritual, whether we're talking about, Jupiter and Pisces or Jupiter going into Aries in the 12th house, which is very Piscean. I mean, this is all throughout the year, very spiritual energy. So um, be aware of these synchronicities, the divine downloads, the increased psychic connection. Um, and 12th house, you know, deals also just as a warning. Um, the shadow side, the dark side of this is, you know, it can bring up issues of loneliness and mental health and needing to heal on a soul and mental level. And so, yeah, during um, Jupiter in the first half of the year and Pisces transiting that 11th house, it looks like um, it could be a year of you, yes, making connections socially, especially if you are working in, you know, for big corporations or if you're entrepreneurs. Um, this can bring about some kind of new group projects and even really good social media visibility. I talked about that earlier. Um, but it's going to be very relevant when we get closer into April and Venus then joins Jupiter um, in the sign of exaltation. Okay, so um, Venus has the power to really um, help you get some insight into who you really are and who is on your side, particularly in the 12th house. Okay, um, Mars, and by the way, um, just as a side note, a final note I should say is that um, it's going to be making its first square with Uranus in your first house. And that's going to be in late, in, in the fall, basically. I spoke a little bit about that earlier. So um, it, there could be some, definitely some stressful situations that come up having to do with you asserting yourself and things just kind of randomly, you know, out of nowhere, getting some kind of pushback in the direction that you're trying to go in. Um, and then Venus is also going to be transiting through that 10th house at the same time. So the good news is that it's hopefully going to help soften the blow of that square. All right. 
Um, but because all of this action is happening between your 10th and 1st house, it could symbolize um, that there is some some direction that you're trying to assert yourself having to do with work. And let me also say that, you know, on the work front, not only do things get better for you in March, but it could also be very busy. And we saw that with the 10 of Wands, where things start moving forward. Um, it really could start picking up in March, but I definitely saw with the cards by mid-year, things get a lot busier. And so make sure that earlier in this year, you are taking the time to um, plan ahead, um, plan ahead for um, any kind of time management so that you're using it wisely, understanding that uh, things could um, things could go slow in the beginning of the year. Um, they're going to speed up and start picking up in March and definitely super, uh, super forward movement around mid-year. But then as we get closer to fall, uh, some gridlock, some timing issues and, yeah, frustrations as well. And I'm going to leave you off with a final angel message of how spirit is helping you through this year. And I'm getting this one here. Angels of the universe. Angel of a soulmate. Okay. Came out in reverse oddly. All right. Um, some of you, you know, timing, I really see that spirit is trying to line things up for you. Okay. Um, some of you though, feeling like this, this soulmate energy is, is not quite lining up just yet, but spirit is helping you to work with that to come into alignment and soulmates. Yes. Could be romance, but it can also be family friends. And so, Pay attention to the downloads you're getting um, this year. Very spiritual energy for you, Taurus. And I think Spirit is trying to get you connected to the family, the friends, the the romance in your life that you desire. Um, but you got to pay attention to those downloads and the divine timing. Till next time, be blessed.